first of all, thank you again for the invitation. It's an honor to be here at Transforming EDU. I was just mentioning to Kerry earlier that not only is the quality of the speakers really impressive, that all the people I've met, but the quality of the audiences as well, uh, the people I've been talking to. So uh, it's exciting to be here. Uh, my other hat that I wear is I'm a medical student at Johns Hopkins, but I've taken time off uh, and scared my parents in the process to co-found an education technology company aimed at medical students first called Osmosis. And we launched officially in August uh, with a mobile, uh, mobile app that and now we have about 6,500 medical students, 5% uh, of the entire US medical student market um, on our platform and we're delivering questions to them via an innovative mobile solution. Uh, and I'm gonna take the next few minutes to talk to you about some of the things we're thinking about, about how to innovate uh, through mobile, as well as wrap up with a few uh, devices that, you know, since we're here at CES, a few devices that I'm really excited about that Osmosis is looking at to potentially integrate and get a whole new data stream about users. So how many of you have heard of the term learning by osmosis? Do you know what that is? Raise your hand, All right? How many of you have actually tried learning by osmosis? <laughs> so I've tried multiple times and uh, we just wrapped up a final, uh, finals in December. And so I used Twitter to find students all around the world who were trying to learn by osmosis. And this is what came up. Uh, not only is it middle school students, it's pilots. I don't know if there's a, oh, whoops. Uh, pilots on top left. We have a medical student sleeping over there. We have a um, high school student trying to learn the ACT. I wonder if having the book upside down is, uh, is appropriate. And I know somebody from the ACT was here earlier. Um, and then we also have cats, and those are the cutest uh, of them. So, uh, so people, uh, students dream uh, literally about learning by osmosis. They really want a passive solution where they can learn and retain information on the go without actually having to open up a textbook um, or a laptop and, and, and devote time to learning. And so the mission of my company is to make learning easier, to make it more efficient, kind of what Swivel does for capturing video. And we're focused on medical education for a couple of reasons. First, it's our area of domain expertise. My co-founder and I are both uh, medical students. Um, more importantly, because we think that if we can solve the problem for medical students, we can solve it for other areas of expertise. This is for a couple of reasons. One is because um, Medical, uh, you know, in most fields, forgetting means fr frustration, but in medical uh, education, the stakes are really high. You know, you can forget how to factor, and that's, that, you know, that's terrible, but a lot, of, a lot of kids probably don't care. But if a medical student forgets a side effect of a drug, that could affect a, a patient. Um, another reason, and probably more importantly, is that it's such a huge body of information, and it's dynamic, it's constantly changing. So students have to keep learning um, on the go. A question for, for one of you just shouted out, what's the average age of a medical uh, resident when they graduate? Just guess. It's about 30, yeah, it's about 30. And so I found this uh, hardening but also disheartening at the same time uh, graph showing the global life expectancy from 10,000 BC to early 2000s. And as you can see, for about 99% of hum hum humanity, the global life expectancy was less than how long it takes to become a doctor. So. <laughs> This is the definition of lifelong learning. <laughs> Another reason um, I, you know, I find medicine very interesting uh, as an as a initial case that we're working on is um, I see a lot of similarities between clinicians and uh, teachers. Uh, the best clinicians and best teachers I've had are very good at behavior change. They both have to take patients or students and motivate them to or change their behavior somehow. Uh, one just wants people to exercise more or eat more healthy. The other one wants people to, or students to learn more. Um, and so we're looking at technologies that will enable this behavior change and make both clinicians and students, uh, teachers, more effective at what they do. And I use um, tech for behavior change. I use the FOG behavior model as a framework for thinking about how to change uh, behavior of our students. So FOG basically boils it down to, and he says, behavior is motivation, ability, and trigger all at the same time. And he has this graph that shows on the y-axis motivation and on the x-axis ability. And if you think about you know, your New, Year, New Year's resolution, it'll probably fall somewhere in this graph. Right? There's varying levels of motivation, obviously around New Year it's pretty high. And then the ability to do something like lose weight or study for the SAT can sometimes be very hard for certain students if they don't have the resources or the time. What Fogg says, and I think it's very insightful, is technology shouldn't focus necessarily on motivation. Because even for medical students that I know, um, who are type A or type AA in some instances, uh, it's very hard to keep them at a high level of motivation for a long period of time. He says use technology instead to improve somebody's ability to change their behavior, as well as and get them past this yellow line, which is an activation threshold, where then you can trigger them to make that actual behavior change. And this is, kind of, this is how we think about osmosis and mobile learning. 
we have uh, a mobile app that we released in August, as I mentioned. It's a free iOS app, so if you have time, just download it and check it out. And what we've done is incorporated elements of behavior change as well as um, uh, other things that will help them retain information for longer. And one example of that is a push notification interface. So we send, at this point, we've probably sent 3,000 push notifications today alone to medical students all across the world. Um, and we send about 6,000 a day. Uh, push notifications like this, clinical cases that then take them right into the app where they can answer, a qu answer the question and uh, read the explanations as well as watch, watch videos, mnemonics, um, images, etc. And our secret sauce is what we do with all this data, how we decide what content to push to which student at what time. Uh, because students are, you know, as I mentioned, medical students need lifelong learning, so we have to actually deliver this information, not in front of a computer or through a textbook, but with their smartphone. Um, and so if I were to boil it down, we're, we're delivering millions of questions to your future doctors to keep them up to date on their medical knowledge. And if I were to summarize what osmosis, uh, what our vision is, um, i would use this slide. Basically, there's a gap between what somebody learns in the curriculum, in the educational years, and what they have to know for their professional careers or real life. In one direction, what we're doing is we're improving students' retention, and that's through the mobile app and all the, um, the big data type stuff we're doing there. And the other direction, it's we improve the relevance. While somebody's in school, uh, we, bring in we bring in real life examples and whatnot that'll get them to retain information more, but also to be more engaged. And I, I view Osmosis as a catalyst. And so obviously the mobile app is the top, the bottom is our web app, and I, I won't talk about that right now. Instead, I'll switch gears to educational gadgets because we're here at CES. Um, so Osmosis is also looking at some gadgets to incorporate other dimensions of uh, student behavior into what we're doing. Um, I write for a medical technology blog called MedGadget, and I've always considered uh, maybe launching a sister site uh, called EdGadget, uh, but I'm too busy, but if any of you are interested in that, uh, feel free to talk to me right after. And I see a lot of cool gadgets being produced, not necessarily for educational purposes, but that have ramifications and applications to education. Uh, one of the earliest experiments I did with medical device um, for education was using an electroencephalogram um, headset. This was called a Zio, and you basically wear it while you sleep and it measures your brainwave activity as you're sleeping and then gives you an output like this where it's basically the, let me see if this works. Uh, you can see uh, this is my sleep cycle from about 12 a.m. to 7 a.m. and red is where you're awake, uh, light green is where you're in REM which is typically associated with dreaming as well as synthesis of information. Um, gray is light sleep and uh, dark green is deep sleep and this is a normal output for what I was used to when I was sleeping. I decided to do an experiment uh, my first year of med school uh, where I was testing audio osmosis. And I was basically, I was wearing one of these headbands as I was listening to six, seven hours of med school lectures while I was sleeping. It was wishful thinking that maybe I could learn subconsciously. Uh, <laughs> and, but don't worry, no, no uh, roommates or girlfriends were, were hurt uh, in the course of this study. Unfortunately, it did not work what I, how, how I thought it would. Instead, as you can see, I was just waking up multiple time points throughout the night instead of, instead of actually, I was hoping for more REM as I was synthesizing information from subconscious temporal uh, involvement. But um, you get the point is, you know, maybe sleep applications and audio osmosis won't work, but there's a lot of interesting brainwave monitoring devices. Three alone launched last year through crowdfunding. Um, and one of the ones that I'm most excited about, and I think the leader in the field, is a company called Emotive. Uh, and their CEO, Tan Lee, and uh, Vice President Kim Du are in the audience. We're, we're working with Emotive and using their headsets to monitor brainwave activity as students uh, learn. So if a student's using the Osmosis mobile app, the goal is to eventually get a measure of their engagement. We can track their alpha and beta waves. Um, and at, at one point, we are, were even considering doing an experiment. If any of you are teachers and want to, want to talk more about this, I'd be happy to, where if you've seen the presidential debates, they have real-time approval ratings. So at TED Med this past April, we did an initial pilot where we put uh, headsets on 20 audience members while they were listening to TED Talks. And we wanted to see you know, which TED Talks were the most engaging. Typically, they're all engaging, but some of them are better than others. Um, and then we, uh, so the results were inconclusive at that point, but you can imagine that collective brainwave monitoring may be a way to get feedback for the professor, but also, more importantly, for that individual student, we can let that student, uh, we can dynamically change the content. So if they're losing focus while watching, say, a swivel produced MOOC uh, lecture, they can then, uh, it'll pause the lecture and say, hey look, refocus and come back later. So that's the, uh, the uh, 20,000 foot view of that. 
and uh, this is second to last slide. Um, basically, there's a lot of other wearable electronics, or what I call wearatronics, that weren't developed, again, for education, but I think will have applications to it. So augmented reality systems like Google Glass, or on top left, you could see from the student's perspective, maybe they can see what their to-do list is, or they're reading Pride and Prejudice, and they don't understand, they don't know the definition of one of the words that they encounter. Instead of uh, not ever looking it up, which 95% of students probably would do, um, they could use Google Glass, maybe the optical character recognition on Glass, to look it up right then and there, like Google Now does. And so I'm excited by, you know, again, think about Fogg's behavior model, increase the ability for students to learn on the go and passively through osmosis. On the bottom left, uh, we have an eye tracking software, uh, eye tracking glass that could also be used to measure engagement. Right now it's used for marketing purposes, but I think education uh, is also a major application. And on the bottom right, this is a bracelet that gets your electrocardiogram, your heart rhythm activity, and uh, identifies who you are, so it's biometrics. And this is obviously of interest potentially for MOOCs, which need to give credit and certify people who are taking the test at the other side of the screen or halfway across the world are who they say they are. So to summarize, unfortunately, osmosis, uh, learning by osmosis doesn't work like this right now, where knowledge diffuses from an area of high concentration to low concentration. but through, through uh, mobile innovation and uh, educational gadgets, the mission of our company is to get it to that point. And so with that, I'd like to thank you for your kind attention and take any questions now or later. That's great. Thank you.